Welcome to Chapter 6. In Chapter 4, I explained how I was hacked by the London Metropolitan Police who wrote me a letter about it. Dot. I have told stories that explain the significance of the audio files that were damaged hen the police hacked me. I have also explained the significance of the two pieces evidence destroyed by the London Metropolitan Police. Chapter 5 was about my little 914. We are on chapter 6, a chronological continuation of earlier chapters. This is a post 914 narration. All the way from my little 914 to December 2010 to early 2011. This book is primarily aimed at narrating experiences in a medical or hospital setting, which lead me to believe that doctors are killing me. In the year 2010, I had not started to show signs of chronic illness. I was not being admitted to hospitals and not seeing a doctor. Frequently, I had never been an inpatient at a hospital or had major medical conditions. My first narration of a medical incident actually begins at the fag end of this chapter 6. The medical incident was created due to my overdose and a hospital that was not safe at all. The Pembroke sent men to kick and bang the door when my boyfriend was away at work and I had to take it all alone. People said I should report it to the police, but the police were hand in glove with the Pembroke. I spent five days in an immigration removal center known as Yardswood in December 2010. The removal did not take place. Jumping to the next bit. I had that overdose on the 16th of January 2011. I had a relapse of a heart attack a month later when I was taken to Charing Cross Hospital. By the middle of 2011, the attacks by the Pembroke Mental Health Center which is located nearby my boyfriend's home were becoming less frequent. This does not mean it was comfortable. It was a form of trauma against which I lacked protection. You see, it turns out that my father made a malicious referral to mental health services. My parents are both alive and were living in a different part of England than me. It is not normal for an adult daughter to be with her parents all the time. Especially when she's living with her partner. My mother made hundreds of calls daily. That level of contact with an adult daughter was not appropriate. My parents' excessive contact interfered in my marriage and my parents also interfered with my self-funded studies in the past. My parents said all kinds of things. So, I didn't keep in touch with my parents every day. Certainly no one would be able to provide the level of contact that my mother required. I just wouldn't speak to my parents and they started forcing it, and my father also made a malicious referral to mental health services to put the fear of God into me, make me a helpless hapless slave, and come back to them. My parents had followed me to England and came to the remote village where I stayed with my husband and my in-laws. People normally leave newlyweds alone. They made out they wanted me and my husband to come and live with them because they wanted me with them all the time. That wasn't a proper game to play with a man of a different race. If my husband had been the same race as me, he would have just shouted no at them. The truth about everything they wanted is far worse than what I'm saying over here. It turns out that there's some truth in the story my parents went to the Pembroke Mental Health Center and asked him to lock me up if I don't obey them and they told them. Apparently that it's the Hindu religion the daughters have to obey their parents. Based on the Pembroke letter of the 29th of September 2011, subsequent, and my parents' admission, this happened exactly as they stated. Although they are famous among mental health lawyers for telling lies under oath. This was after I'd been told that my father was telling people that I should be locked up, 
telling all kinds of things to my GP. The GP had been approached by my parents in person and had just asked him to go away. The GP said my father had asked him to give my address in violation of the Data Protection Act and the GP had refused. My father had told my GP that he wanted my address to save my life. My father had said I was mentally crazy and would starve to death in my boyfriend's home. Unless my father gave me money, and I was refusing that money due to mental illness. If all that does not make any sense, that's what the GP said my father told he. I believe the GP. A subsequent letter from Pembroke in late 2011 in response to my complaint about them kicking and banging the door when my boyfriend went to work, constantly keeping me in terror stated that my parents had approached him to do this. My parents had asked the Pembroke to be at my heels all the time until I obeyed them. It was the law of my religion and I disobeyed that law due to mental illness. My parents had told Pembroke. Hindu women obeyed their parents. My parents told Pembroke. The latter followed it up. They stalked me extensively to obey Hindu law. As I have already explained, Pembroke is a multi-racial community of illiterate folks hailing from socially backward sections of the respective races. Sadly, the London Metropolitan Police used Pembroke in a similar role as the beautiful female oracle in a James Bond movie who assisted a criminal organization to judge who was trustworthy and to evade the police. Until James Bond arrived, and everything changed. This is part of a wider practice to trust persons possessing female genitalia, who are employed by the mental health service to interpret the speech of women who might be of interest to police. To keep it simple, if I said cat and these women said I meant dog, police would take action along the canine route. These functionally illiterate and low-caliber ladies had ordered a squadron of men to conduct a nocturnal helicopter chase of a gentle and harmless man, who was fleeing from them. My late friend, Regent Exeter, chapters 7 and 8, managed to evade detection by infrared cameras by diving into thick vegetation in a graveyard. He eventually died from these repeated human rights abuses. It is ridiculous that these ladies who stare at you keenly like a German shepherd, have been given the grandiose powers of a doctor, a policeman. They are treated as experts to interpret the motives of persons with female genitalia, who are not liked by unknown persons in the state, treated as experts in military intelligence.